But, um, and so a couple other things I'm also going to do is we're going to kind of give you an idea of some communicative language teaching. And I should also ask this, um, how many of you uh, probably use CI in your classroom already, sort of, to a certain extent? Okay, so I'm kind of, all right, so, okay, that's the majority of you. Okay, that's good. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of this stuff, maybe you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, is it really communicative language teaching? Uh, when we say there's communicative language teaching that the textbook says that it's communicative language teaching and a lot of times what do you see in it? Having students do A-B conversation roles based on pictures in a te textbook, right? Which is not considered communication. I mean, it can, it can be called speaking practice, right? Um, but it's not communication because a lot of the times you know that um, students are basically just following the model and it'll say something like, Oh, here you go. Ask your partner if he or she wants to go to the following places. You look at the model, so you point at the picture and ask your, um, uh, your partner, do you want to go to the beach? Yes, I'd like to go to the beach. Okay, your turn. Do you want to go to the restaurant? Um, sure, what time? You know, like the examples are expecting that the students are going to come up with these, you know, like a follow-up response or something like that. So, you probably know what I'm talking about, and I guess the show of hands are who, um, who uh, has, I guess, uh, that your work, your curriculum is a textbook in your school district. Okay, uh, me too. Um, okay, so you see a lot of that, and um, it's best not to use any communicative activity in the textbook, I say, um, and create your own, but make it task-based. Um, and uh, Bill Van Pan talks a lot about that kind of stuff. So basically, um, because the communicative activities in a textbook, and sometimes if people are not using an activity in the book, they'll create their own communicative activity, which basically looks just like the, the activity in the textbook. They just created them themselves on paper. Um, and, uh, or they might do something where they might have five or six questions, and they interchange questions with each other. Um, and that's basically kind of like um, speaking practice, I guess, and to kind of practice the vocab of a given unit. Um, but, oh, and I should ask this too. Um, so, so for those of you, some of you said you didn't have a textbook, um, but maybe you're still, uh, you have like a predefined vocab list that you're doing every chapter along with a grammatical element. So even if you're not having a textbook, you might still be doing that, right? Okay, um, as well. And I think, you know, I, I want to say that a lot, of, a lot of teachers and a lot of departments are still doing that. Um, so what's communication? It's the expression and interpretation of meaning in a given context. Okay. Context is defined as the setting and the participants, and it should be intuitively obvious to us that context is communication. And, and it, it seems like always our context is within a classroom. And how we interact in a classroom is different from how we interact uh, during dinner with friends. I'm just kind of giving you a couple ideas to think about before um, I kind of do some, I show you what I do with my classes. And I'm basically const um, constrained to having to use a textbook curriculum, and we have common assessments and things like that. And so basically, um, I just I kind of do the best that I can in order to make everything CI based, based on a predetermined vocab list and uh, grammar structures. Um, so what else? Uh, we have forced output. Um, a lot of times what I do with my students, I don't have them do anything more than two word responses when they're engaging with me because we, it gives them something to say to communicate with me, but I don't give them anything, I don't ask them any kind of questions that force them to come up with uh, any more than two words because we're always focusing on input and not, not their output until they're, they feel like they're comfortable and they're ready to produce for themselves. Um, so a lot of times, a lot of my questions are always, uh, yeah, questions that elicit an open-ended response, questions that keep output controlled, and so I do a lot of yes or no questions and a lot of either or questions, especially um, everything that I do is a lot, is very story-based. And then interrogative questions only if enough input has been provided and with the parameters of your, of your topic. Um, plus, if you email me, I can give you my whole PowerPoint slides, too, by the way. Um, so, um, anyone uh, who does, who's familiar with uh, do, doing storytelling? Okay, well, okay. Um, and this, okay, so that's good. So then this would be, uh, allow students to try their own when they're ready. Um, Okay, so who teaches level one? French, Spanish? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I should ask this too. I have a lot of questions to kind of see who, I'm seeing, uh, what, who my audience is. Uh, who are the Spanish teachers? Okay, um, and then any other language besides Spanish? Okay, 
Um, French? Chinese. Chinese. Latin. Latin. Chinese. Chinese. Latin. 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 German. German. No French. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And who's teaching level one? Okay. So uh, let me ask you this. What are, what, so the question is, what are we introducing to students at the beginning of a level one class? Greetings. Greetings. Greetings, yeah. Likes and dislikes. Likes and dislikes. Maybe let's say maybe the first four weeks of here. I'll give you yeah the, within the first three weeks of school. Likes and dislikes. Numbers. Where you're from? Where you're from? Okay. Anyone say the alphabet? To say oh, ab, yeah. say de, 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 you know, and do the little like you. The chant. The chant. Okay. Um, and uh, maybe some you know a list of interrogative words and. Um, so that, those are typical things, right? Um, the age, expressing your age, where you're from, what's your name, and let's let's know what all the you know. Let's say the, the entire alphabet and numbers one through a hundred. Did, did someone say? Did, that, did someone also ask what time is it? Was that yeah, one of them? Did someone say that too? Okay, the time, the date, the months. Okay, yeah. all this stuff that is not high frequency. Okay, and to my opinion, is like. What better way to bore your students with all that stuff at the beginning of the, of the school year? Um, so I take out the time, for example, and I don't go to the alphabet. Um, those, those two things mainly. And for numbers, I go maybe 1 through 20. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. These are my class expectations. OK, so basically how I would start a level 1 class, express your name, origin, and age. It's got relevance because you're, you know, you're also building rapport. And you're, you know, what great questions to ask your name. Where are you from? How old you are? Numbers 1 through 20, right? Because the students are no older than 18. <coughs> and take out the, um, well, you know, mostly. And, uh, yeah. um, and then what time is it? Que hora es? Son las whatever. That can be something safe for the school unit. What time do you have math class? Or something, and uh, because you know, yeah, and then uh, and then I do the super seven high frequency words, um, and I'll have the list on the next slide, and they're also posted on the board so that everybody can see, um, with the you know defined in English for them as well, so that I don't have to say anything in English. I can just point to the word um, with my little laser pointer if I'm not by the board, um, and I use I start doing circling QA. Q&A, circling, question and answers, um, and uh, persona especial, special person. So I kind of start having, um, <clears throat> this is kind of what I start with for the first week, um, or the first couple weeks. And I do special person as well. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So, but there's also the sweet 16. And like I said, if you email me, I can give you this entire PowerPoint if you don't want to. You know, write everything down and take pictures of it. Okay, I'll just send you there, the, my, all my slides here. Um, the Sweet 16 form the essential structures of level one. Okay, so these are the super seven. Um, so you have is and is also before because in Spanish, you know, we know it's ser and estar, right? And then there is and there are, which is I, right? Um, likes, le gusta, and goes, va, and quiere. <clears throat> and this is all in third person. I'll show you my, my, I have a picture of my poster in my classroom in the next slide. And then, then you have some other ones like leaves, does, becomes, can, gives, says, knows, returns, sees. Okay, so what? So this is like a, an essential. This is essential to start if you want to do storytelling with your classes. You know, because everyone has. You know, you're describing somebody how old they are and uh, uh, what they want to do. They want to go somewhere. There's a boy and uh, <clears throat> say I'm a whatever. That it's not really a high frequency word. You know. But you're always going to say, there's a boy, and as he calls him, you know, hay un muchacho, que se llama Jose. And we're going to do a storytelling in here, too, and you can, you're going to be the students. <coughs> um, and other ones that I, so I have these up all year long. And uh, other words, you know, sometimes I, I'm starting to reconstruct how I'm going to do this, but like, like you know, I think maybe like looks for should be in there, busca, and cries, llora, um, you know. And some other things can't find no puede encontrar so that to find should be up there you know so it has like some something to do to because um, there's always a problem maybe she, she's looking for something and she can't find it um, okay so here's my classroom and uh, I got the question words running along the top with the definition uh, you know definition so they're up there since the beginning of the year <clears throat> so whenever so I can keep myself in the language and say de donde eres 
And I just point and say, de donde eres? Soy de uh, wherever I'm from, you know, to give them an example so I can maintain myself in the language. And there's my Super 7. Well, it's all the Super 16 right there. Okay. So that's basically my, my setup for the entire year. We got all the interrogative questions, and we got all the high frequency words all right there, ready to go. And uh, so what sets the basis for the rest of the year. Do you um, hide those during assessments? No. Or you just leave them? I, I just leave them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and everything's in third person. And we'll get around, we'll talk about that too. How do you incorporate first and second if you're always doing stories in third person? We'll <coughs> get sure thinking that. Oh, and here's it closer. Okay. Um, what else? Activities using CI. So things that I do. I'm describing scenario pictures. <coughs> um, you know, sometimes a picture of a girl riding a bike in a park, and then I just start circling that. Or it's a TPRS, it's a story. Um, and in my case, you know, I write stories from scratch uh, because I'm bound to the, um, to the Realidades textbook. And so I just take the vocab list, see what the grammar element is, and create a story using as much as I can. Um, <clears throat> but using CI to teach a traditional um, textbook uh, syllabus which we'll talk about that, which um, it would be hard not to do that, but when you have no choice, what do you do? Um, CI is better than no CI. Uh, student, student improv stories. Uh, sometimes I'll do a, a, you know, a story where it's not all scripted, and I give them some options. Um, and you, you'll have my video there. I'll say, okay, there's a girl. Okay, what's her name? Okay, Susana. Okay, hay una muchacha que se llama Susana. Y uh, <coughs> como es, describe la muchacha. Or cuantos años tiene? You know, and give them some, you know, some, like my plot's still the same, but I kind of have them add some details. And then some, because a lot of times, a lot of stories I have are already pre-written. Some, sometimes with storytelling, you basically start from scratch with nothing, and then they dictate where, where, whatever the story is going to be about. <clears throat> but at the same time, the thing is, I don't know, I'm working with a textbook curriculum, so I have to have this vocab and this grammatical structure, so I have everything pre-written, you know. Um, a special person, we do that starting in week one, and uh, picture talk, and then reader novels like Paul Rihanna, Brandon Brown Wants a Dog, and everything from Fluency Matters and Esperanza, and you can start, you know, maybe after this, you know, second or third week, um, you know, everybody, we can all read as a class set, um, uh, a book. Um, Paul Rihanna's not too exciting, but I usually start with that just because the language is very comprehensible. Um, <coughs> Okay, if, you're so, not, if you're not in, familiar with some of those, can you find in explanations online for like special person? Or? Yes, uh, and then movie talks to, well the special person is right here. Oh. So, um, so basically I hand this out to all the students. Um, it says write your answers on the sheet. I'll be interviewing everyone in class and you'll have the sheet in front of you when they come up to interview. So I give this out and I have all the translations. And this is like, right, you know, maybe four days into the beginning of the school year. What's your name? How old are you? When is your birthday? Where do you live? Where are you from originally? It doesn't have to be this long. It can be a, uh, however many questions you feel comfortable with. <clears throat> do you have a pet? What do you like to do? What type of music do you like? What is your favorite social media? Do you play a sport? All these things that matter to your students, right? And, uh, and bringing up their interest and plus your rapport building at the same time while try, you know, getting the language going, you know, during the, like, you know, at a, you know at day two and three already. <clears throat> and uh, where would you like to visit someday? What class do you like? How many siblings do you have? So, yeah, I think I, I kind of, I, I got this from somebody, but then I added some more to kind of, I think that's a nice little snapshot that we could ask somebody. Um, and then there's the Spanish questions. And then, um, then I have them answer the questions. So um, they go ahead and they put in all their information. Okay, and then, um, you know, so they put me llamo, whatever their name is. Tengo tres años, I'm 13. Mi cumpleaños is the 4th of April, that's their birthday. And then the third person um, I put there, but they don't have to, and then they can translate that if they want. Um, <clears throat> So they all fill this out, and then um, basically, maybe the next day, um, I have a volunteer, we have a stool, they come and sit in the middle of the room, they have their piece of paper, and they're like, okay, class, we have a special guest today, um, and I'm interviewing them. <coughs> Como te llamas? And I say, me llamo uh, John. Ah, mucho gusto, John. Uh, uh, me llamo Señor Wei. Uh, clase, yeah. él se llama John. Uh, clase, se llama Mark. No, se llama John. 
C. So we're getting this Sangama thing going on and circling. And then I'm going to go back to him for a minute. And as they're doing this, it's up to you because you want to have the students having to do something. Um, they're writing the information as, you know, whatever he's saying. They're writing the information themselves too on a handout as well. And then, so they get a lot of slips. And I'm writing and I'm writing the information on the board as he says it. Even if his name's John, we all, you know, I still write J-O-H-N and question. So uh, where did they get the vocab to fill in like their sports? Uh, was that already taught prior in a thank, thank you, yes. No, um, so yes, yeah, so the sports, yes, I have the sports on the board too. And this is how you spell them, pick a sport, and they put football and everything else. Mm -hmm. And then as, and then where's the what you like one? Uh, what do you like to do? Um, Yes, I give, I give them a whole list of words and I tell them what they mean. So all your typical ones, you know, to sing, to dance, to ride a bike, you know, all of, you know, all of those things. Um, and they, you know, and then they pick. So, yeah, and then, um, and then we just go down the list and I say, oh, a job, and I put those on, just get it. And they can just read off of it, uh, trece, I don't need a complete sentence either, it's not the, you know. Ah, uh, ¿Tienes 13 años? Pase, por favor, John, ¿tiene 13 años o 12 años? They say, 13 años. And I have 13. All right, muy bien. And then, ¿cuándo es tu cumpleaños? And they say, and so on and so forth. ¿Dónde vives? You live in whatever, where are you from originally? And then we just go throughout the whole list. <clears throat> and then at that point, all right, clase, por favor. Um, uh, and then I just pick whatever. But like as a recap, ¿de dónde es John originalmente? They all say Plymouth. I'm like, okay, muy bien. Uh, ¿Qué tipo de música le gusta? And they say <clears throat> rap. And uh, ¿cuál, es tu, ¿cuál es su red social favorito? And they say um, whatever the thing is, these Snapchat. Okay. <laughs> um, where would you like to live someday? ¿A dónde le gustaría uh, vivir algún día? <clears throat> they all say um, Arizona. Like, okay, muy bien, gracias, clase, aplauso, everyone applauses and goes and sits down. And then, you know, I might have another person do it as well. And then, and then we move on with the rest of the day, but I do this every single day for the first five weeks of school. You know, I'll get through, I'll get through everybody, you know. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, because by now, all these things, I mean, my, student, my level one students, they don't even think that, they, just, they can just answer the questions, you know, that we've heard them all over and over and over again. Um, but obviously you can kind of look for examples on YouTube, like special person and see, you know, visually see how it is. Um, yes? Is the fourth column in third person just as a reference for them, or is that where they write in the other students' responses? <clears throat> yes, this paper they have all the time, until it's their time to go up. Yeah, and then, yes, um, whenever we do special person, um, I make sure I have, yeah, they, they get another sheet that has all these columns and they're all in third person. So they'll do a student for one day, okay. they'll keep the sheet. Um, if I do two students, while well, they put all the information, yes, they're writing this stuff out on, a, on another sheet that's got all third person in every column. Okay. So they're adding the students as they go. And I know some teachers will, you know, maybe sometime do like a multiple choice quiz or something like that based on the last three people they you know, we interview and things like that. So, um, but uh, this is the first year that I've, out of 14 years, this is the first year I've done, I, I tapped into doing this. First time I've, I started introducing a special person was uh, this how, fall. How long does it take you for one student, one interview? Typically. I started doing it this trimester and I don't know if it's... Um, 10 minutes. Okay. I do two at a time and it's about 20, so that's... Yeah. So the teacher has to interview, the students don't interview other students. No, I'm the, inter I am the interviewer, and that, that's the interviewee, that's the audience taking down the information. And then I spot check, and then I circle with yes or no questions in either or to start getting the, the structures down, you know. Uh, John is the Canton or is the Redford? Ah, is the, uh, you know. Canton. Yeah. <laughs> Canton, and we move on. Uh, <clears throat> And then after I do it enough, I don't do the yes and no and either ors anymore. I just I, I just say ask direct questions because they've heard these over and over and over again, you know, in the input, so they just know what to say. You know, I, I just pick out uh, uh, anything. Que deporte juega? And they all say football. I don't I don't have to give yes and no either ors anymore. Um, oh, I'm sorry. See, there you go. See, I, I would give this all out to them. It's a full piece of paper. So three on one side, three on the back. 
you know, so that covers six students. So do they need to read the full sentence or just one to two words? The person I'm interviewing? The, uh, the person who's uh, comprehension being checked their comprehension, like you call on someone from the audience. I, I, just, I don't call them specifically. It's just a shout out. Okay. Should they read the full sentence that's already there as a prompt, or? Uh, I don't know. I'm just focusing on the input. They can if they want, but I don't require it. Um, <clears throat> okay. So um, also, I'll do kind of sometimes I'll do some mini stories to start do, I mean, that go nowhere just to start getting the super seven going. Um, let's say um, uh, class A. Hay uh, una muchacha. Clase, hay un muchacho o una muchacha. Ah, sí, hay una muchacha. There's a girl. Y uh, dónde está la muchacha? Está en el parque o está en el restaurante? I'll, I'll use cagnets first. You know, my focus is the está. You know, and they say está en un parque or just say en, en parque. That's all I need. One word response. It's fine. I'm the one providing the input, and they, they're getting the meaning of está. <coughs> um, and then, um, you know, a ella le gustan. Los perros. She likes dogs. Clase, por favor. A ella le gusta. Remind, remember, I've got the Super 7 on the board. They can see the, you know, the words and the definitions. Right? Um, sí. Uh, ¿Le gustan los perros o le gustan los gatos? And they all say, los perros. Ah, sí, muy bien. Clase, su perro se llama, um, whatever the dog's name is, Oscar. <coughs> Oscar, le gustan las pelotas de tenis. Now that's just something else. I'll write the word. I hope it's that image really quickly, and then I don't have to translate it correct point so they know it's a tennis ball. Um, but unless you think it's kind of ambiguous what you said, and then define it on the board, you know, in English. Um, and that's it. But that's just a mini story. Just to kind of, same thing with him. I just kind of find some, you know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going over esta and you know, esta and sejama and es rubio and. Le gustan los gatos, se llama, como se llama el gato, donde está, está en la casa. So, you know, or he has a cat, so at the beginning, we're, you know, these little mini things I'm emphasizing, tiene, está, le gusta, and I'm sorry for those who don't speak, um, has, likes, and uh, is, um, okay. How do you make those normal little screen? Uh, just a little custom animation on PowerPoint, I'll show you. Um, and then sometimes I do some circling over this stuff because I just come up with little scenarios to ask them the questions. Like I said, I'm doing the textbook, so it's like I throw in the day and the date, and you know, que hora es son las once de la mañana. You know, what's the weather like? That's chapter one as well. Um, so into stories. Okay, so TPRS, uh, teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling. So the structure words are already written on the board. Maybe some structures you want to focus on. You have them defined if you want. You know, dashed. All right, whatever structures you're going to focus on. Um, start with yes or no and either or questions. Okay? Um, have students react to what you say. If you want, you can have them say ah or ooh to kind of get them invested into what you're saying. Um, use gestures uh, to signal their response. Um, answer your own inter oh, and then also um, answer your own interrogative questions so they can be ready to answer those questions on the second or third telling of the story. Because a lot of times I'll do that. I'll say. ¿Cómo se llama la muchacha? I'm not expecting them to answer that question. You know, I'm just throwing it out there. And I'm like, ¿se llama Julia o se llama Alejandra? And then, third time around, I can just say, ¿cómo se llama? And they can just give me the direct, you know, answer because it's the third telling of the story. And, you know, I premised all my yes or no or either or questions with the interrogative question first, you know, for the first time around. But I'm only expecting them to say yes or no or in either or for the first or second telling of the story. And then the third time, we go into direct questions. Um, and then PQA, okay, we were gonna, okay. All right, so I did this as an example. <clears throat> I just did this the other day. Um, this was just kind of like a recap. I did a story with all my students. Um, just kind of recapping everything we learned so far. Um, and it, it, the story really doesn't go anywhere. Um, but, uh, so, but normally I do have a plot. So I would say something like this. If you're not familiar with this, I would say, um, and now this is just a recap of everything they've done since April, or since the beginning of the school year. Say, clase, por favor. Um, hay una muchacha y se llama Natalia. Uh, ¿cómo, se, ¿Cómo se llama la muchacha? Natalia o Alejandra? And they all say, Natalia. Natalia. Um, ella vive 
Vive, and I do actions for a lot of my words too, <coughs> um, as a TPR thing a little bit. Ella vive en una casa en el campo. Frase, por favor, uh, vive en una ciudad grande. No. I say, no, vive en una casa en el campo. Sí, sí. and then I say, ¿cómo se llama? They say, Natalia. Um, and then, ¿cuántos años tiene? 16. Whoever wants to volunteer, I'm like, okay, tiene 16 años y vive en el campo, se llama Natalia. And then, um, tiene una hermana, um, se llama Mia. Y clase, ¿cuántos años tiene Mia? And then, ocho. ocho años. Muy bien. Ella tiene ocho años. Um, ¿Y cuántos años tiene Natalia? ¿Tiene ocho años? No. no. ¿Tiene cuántos años? Quince. Quince. Because, you know, I don't, you know, I, I go back and recycle a little bit before I move on because this is going to come in with a time right where they have to write everything from memory on this live paper, which I'll give you all these so you can see an example of this. Um, okay. ¿Y dónde? And then, uh, vive en el campo. Okay. Su madre se llama Lorena y su padre se llama Ignacio. Uh, Lorena trabaja en un, re, uh, en un hospital en la ciudad de Detroit. Su padre es cocinero en un restaurante. They never had cocinero at that point, so I have that on the board. Of cocinero. Muy bien. They don't even have cocinar because that doesn't come up until Spanish 2 of the chores unit. You know? <laughs> I, right? Yeah. I'm not waiting around. Um, so, es cocinero, you know, for the textbook to tell me when I can show something. Um, so, es cocinero y trabaja en un restaurante. Frase, por favor, ¿quién trabaja en un hospital? Su madre. Su madre, muy bien. ¿Y quién es cocinero? Madre. Su padre. ¿Cómo se llama la madre? Lorena. Lorena, muy bien. ¿Y cómo se llama uh, su hija? Natalia. Natalia, muy bien. And then, I'm going to show you one word. There's actually a plot, but um, I just wanted to do this for a time, right, so they can see how many words they were able to write um, at this point.